so guys i'm actually shooting this video in the middle of the night i am in my daughter's room for the peace and quiet i really want to get this message out there so please don't go anywhere just relax and listen <laughs> Oh, hello, hello. Welcome back to our channel. Yes, this is Tim Liar and Mom channel. Yes, but most especially you'll be seeing this face. So I want to sincerely thank all of our subscribers, everyone that have been dropping us comments and likes and every other thing. Thank you so much for doing just that. And to all of our beautiful and handsome new subscribers, yes, you are very, very welcome. Like, this channel has a lot in store for you. All you need to do is to chill, relax, and watch it unfold, you get, okay? So I'm just going to dive into the video because I know it's going to be a bit lengthy. So I'm not going to, like waste any second at all i'm just going to dive into it and give you what you've been wanting so a lot of people have requested i go deep into this small child's business this is what i do this is what i love to do like i didn't really love to do it at first but then i started and i went into it and it become something i would call a hobby because doing it is now fun like i don't even know when i get to do a lot so i'm just going to go into it and just give you my own view how i do my own how it works for me and all that so i won't go into it except i go into why i myself started this business so how i started it it wasn't like meditated i didn't really plan to go into it it just happened i moved to oshogbo from benin where i live with my parents and all that so i got married and i moved here so when i moved here it was a struggle because i don't know anything about this place i don't know like i don't have i don't feel like my friends are here or i don't have where to go or anything to do and the most important thing is that i'm not the type that likes to be idle you get i always want to do something so i i look around i try to figure out what I can do that can actually add value to where I am or that can actually give me money. Because at the end of the day, it's about you making profit from what you're doing, right? So, and I also wanted to do something that I love doing. I love being in the kitchen, making food or doing other stuff. So that's just like part of me. I have been in food business like in the past and it was okay but then pastry and uh, like the small chops thing it's not something i have ever done before so i went into like i watched some videos on youtube i get to like do some particles i made some for myself i ate them i tried different um recipes then um i just came across it and i just learned from it and I didn't really use any of the recipes instead i made it to work for me and the people around me because there are some things that you want to get but because of your environment so you know small chops or whatever we call it here in nigeria is like an indian delicacy like a starter in indians or asia country in general so uh samosa is something i didn't want to learn from any nigerian because i feel like we don't know about it so much so i went ahead and i checked for these indian people on youtube and i learned that one from them and also the spring roll though i had to put my own twist to get what i want but i actually learned it from people living in asia or outside the country so i i just did some for myself and i can still remember like the first time i had an order but before i go into that i'll tell you how this order came which was me opening a social media which is an instagram account and one thing i did was to use my location because small shops is not something you can way be out of town right so you want to open an instagram account and to use your location where you are so that people around you can easily find you if they are interested in such a thing if they ever search for such a thing so i went ahead i, op I opened a new instagram account for that and then i start taking pictures from google from youtube from other instagram uh, vendors and i started posting like okay if you want any of this i can actually make it note i don't want to use my picture because i didn't feel like i was like good enough but i was just trying to build my own circle like build my customers um like 
try to get people to come to my instagram and to like show interest i actually crave for that interest like let somebody just at least message me and tell me oh i want small chops even if they don't end up ordering just show me the interest that you are seeing my post or even just give me a like or a comment i was actually craving that and it actually took time like unlike these days that it, it, it can actually happen in ori but then it actually took time it wasn't easy some point to as if i was like uh in the shadow like nobody was seeing me but then on this faithful saturday right this lady now messaged me she was like i got your whatsapp number from uh, uh instagram i followed from instagram i was like oh wow welcome what do you want how can i be of service and she's like i'm dedicating my child tomorrow in church and i want some packs of small chops and i'm like okay okay how many packs and she was like 50. just imagine my first order happens to be like a bulk order i was very happy to take this order but then i was frightened because i haven't even made a small pack for anyone how then do i go and make 50 packs you get how is this going to work like how am i going to go about it how do i even cost it and all that so i just told her okay i'll get back to you with the price with the quotation right so i went ahead i did the calculation of everything i needed and the price i would have given to her is something that i find to be too expensive because i was scared to deliver something bad or i was scared she won't be satisfied and i didn't want to like give her price that when she pay she'll start regretting ever patronizing me so what like what i did i had to cut the cost and just it was almost free yes my first order i delivered was like almost free because i was scared to charge for it because i haven't even done it for anyone else apart from myself i tasted it it was nice but i haven't actually tasted from other vendors so how do i know mine is actually nice so i went ahead i bought what she want i bought the whole ingredient i needed for this order there was a lot of flip-flop in this order but then i picked myself and i told myself i am going to deliver this order so the sunday morning came i did all the frying i put everything in order i packed it and i waited for like delivery person it was delaying i don't want my first order to be like the one that they will start calling me hello where are you and all that so she said she was going to church by 8 but she wanted me to deliver to her house by um 7 30 right in the morning what i had to do i had to wake up very early prepare this order by 6 30 i was done and this bike man was just like it was the problem i was having that morning what i did i i dressed my daughter up for church and we left i had to take like different vehicles to get to this location mind you i just got here like two three months uh, behind i don't even know by way around i've been indoor i've not been doing anything i barely go out but then i had to ask questions and locate this place and when i got to her early it was as in she was really happy she was like wow you are early good thing first time i'm ordering something and it actually came early this melts my heart like i was so proud i wanted to really do this and i went and i delivered it i was just curious i, I was I, in fact i went to church and i couldn't even stay i was just like open and waiting for her to just call me and give me a complaint or better still give me a feedback it lasted the evening at least no news is good news right so i waited it was evening and i messaged her i said how was it ma did you enjoy it did your guests like it and she was like wow you are the best this tastes so good is the best i was like really she was like it's the best i ever had and all that wow i was so impressed like i i, I was i was just screaming in me like i was alone but i was just like god thank you and all that the other went well she, she even had to send me two thousand naira. like ah take this two thousand you need to buy more see that two thousand naira was like a gold to me because all, all my fear and everything just washed down and i had this money to like like a thank you money for something i was actually scared of so that's that for how i started because after that day i started making like ready to fry it was like 
when the COVID was about starting and during the COVID. So during the COVID, I actually took it like a little serious because everybody was home. Everybody wanted something different. Everybody wanted to snack on something. So I was just uploading, uploading, uploading. I made a lot of video from that first order. So I was just giving them from different corner, like uploading different version of the old order as if it was different days, right? So of course, uh, people that actually saw the video thought, oh, I'm having uh, several orders, but it was still one so like that i started getting requests for a pack these that people are just like sending in their orders that was exactly how i started my small chops business so i'm going to go um straight i have a list here if you see me looking down i'm actually i don't want to miss a point i actually went through your comments and i know what you ask and i'm yet to like answer some of those questions though this video can't give you all like it can't answer all of you so please pardon me okay it's going to be like a little long video but you are going to actually learn or hear me say what you want to hear okay so what you need to know what you need to know before going into this business is that you need to have passion for it as per every other business if you don't have passion for it or if you don't have interest in what you are doing you are not going to last like it's not going to last long you are just going to get into it and still get out of it like in a hurry you get Okay, in my own case, when I was doing the food business, people started requesting for food. Because if my chops is this good, why not go into food, right? So I went into food business as well. But my food business is not something I actually take serious. Because food exhausts me more than chops does. Chops is not an easy job. Like, it's, it's exhausting. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of strength and energy. But then, I prefer to do chops than to do food. If you give me 300 packs of chops and maybe a 50 packs of food to make, I would prefer to do the chops. Not just because of the money, but because that's where I have interest in. You get, that's what I know. Okay, I, I have my ways. I know how to manipulate everything and it's just like come together within a short period of time. But if I should go into food, there are some, there are some things that will look very stressful for me. You understand? There are some things that will, that will not be, like, be balanced. I will just feel very stressed doing it so i choose what is easy or not easy per se but i choose what i have most interest in what i'm what i'm like what i have hobby in doing let's just use that word right so you have to have the passion for it you have to know that okay i want to go into this thing i love doing this thing mind you baking and small chops business there are two different things if you love baking doesn't mean you should you will love doing small chops these are two different ball games you want to bake pies and you want to start making chops and fry and they are two different ball games because this is direct and this is like a lot of corners to go through so you have to have interest like i've already mentioned so when you've already decided like after asking yourself if you have interest in this thing or if this is what you want to go into what you, you you will need, like the most important things you will need for a start, like the materials, the equipment you will need for a start. You don't really need much. Like some people buy this, um, I won't say some people because I actually bought it at some point, but then it wasn't, it was time consuming. I need electricity to use it and that wasn't like the speed I want in my business. It was delaying. I use it for some time and I just dump it to get. So like what I'm talking about is like there's an equipment. I'll try to put the picture out there so you can understand what I'm saying. Some people go to buy that equipment like a um, hot uh, plate kind of that does uh, this rotor, uh, a samosa skin or whatever. But then you are, you are a startup. You need to learn the other way, like the way that is easy. So, like, you don't have electricity around. You can still go ahead with your business. You don't need to look for generator or start looking for electricity before you can actually process a customer's order. Because you are going to get busy to the extent that you will need yourself to rely on other than electricity you get. So, the major um, uh, equipment, in my opinion, that you need is, one, most importantly, you need a non-stick frying pan not just a non-stick fry pan like the cheap ones that actually that can easily get scratched you need a quality non-stick fry pan if you invest in that you have a lot of stress-free production like you are going to you are going to experience stress-free production it's going to take a lot of stress away from you you understand because it's a clean sheet 
you get unlike the ones that that are cheap that can easily that the heat can easily start burning up the pan can easily start burning you get so the one i'm using is a very small one i bought that one for 3500 now it's a very small one the reason i bought the small one is because it's it, it doesn't allow me to waste any cut out dough any cut out and shit you get yeah, I, when i use it i just get the exact um round shape that i need i don't get to cut out any pieces cutting out those pieces is actually waste of a um, floor or waste of your mixture because if you make a wider sheet you have to cut out and start wasting um, mixture you get but when you buy the small one the one i said is for three thousand five hundred naira or maybe four thousand naira depending on your location or the price of it right now you have to you will get the exact uh, shape that you need so let's say the smallest of the non-stick original one please so another important thing that you need you need a iron sieve that one is for frying dough that one is for frying but what you need again for the dough is the brush this brush is not the type that they sell in the building material place it's not the uh wooden or the rubber kind of brush this one it looks like a, a um like a uh air i don't know it feels like hair maybe the skin of animals i don't know but you find this uh, kind of brush in a cake shop like a baking shop they always have it so you need that kind of brush i'll put all the pictures i'm talking about in the in the screen so you can actually have a picture to understand what i actually what i mean by the by the description i'm giving so you need the brush you will need the non-stick pan and you also need a smaller brush just to like brush off the edge that's like three equipment i've mentioned then the uh sieving pan the sieving pan you will need that as as well then maybe a, a chopping board or just a flat um cake board yeah you need like a flat table that is very smooth preferably you can just get one cake board of like 200 or 300 uh, just so you can be rolling your sheet on top because you need it very flat and clean something you can sprinkle flour on and it won't get any it won't it won't put any put any oil in your in your sheets you get so those are what you you need yeah for the equipment right then let's go into how you can actually manage manage the business without stress you get what i do for myself whenever i'm less busy like when i don't have any orders i'm running for i go ahead i buy my beef i buy my chicken i buy my veggies i make bulk of spring growth filling bulk of chicken samosa filling and bulk of beef samosa filling these are the three variant of like three things i use to serve my customers right so when i make them in bulk what i do this is a ziploc bag and it's the smallest uh, sandwich size so i go ahead i portion them in this kind of bag you get i portion them in this kind of bag and i label it like to let me know what is there or what date it was made or i can go ahead and use this one this is just a packaging nylon bag then i'll just use rubber band to band the tip the reason i'm showing you both bags is because they are different prices okay i bought this bag this ziploc bag it's a sandwich size 125 pieces in the, in the box and i bought it for three thousand naira, right 125 pieces the good thing about this is 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 washable like it's reusable you can wash it you can reuse it right but sometimes i don't i don't really fancy using this because the oil and everything i might not have the time to wash it and it, it should still be a waste okay so this one is just a normal bag it has 100 pieces in it it's not reusable it's not washable but it has 100 pieces in it and it's just 450 naira maximum 500 naira and it's 100 pieces it comes in different sizes this size is actually the one of 450 naira there are other bigger and other smaller sizes of like 300 600 naira and all that so if you are the type like me sometimes i don't like to wash i don't like to reuse my bags depending on what i already store inside if it's something oily i don't really go through the stress of washing but if it's something dry i can just rinse it and then 
dry it up somewhere and reuse but i use this small because this one when i use i just let it go so when i store stuff here if it's much then i will know i want to make more of the product more samosa or more spring roll depending on the filling inside but the good thing about storing it here is that when you want to make maybe a dozen you can actually open take from it and then zip it back and keep in your refrigerator you get so that's that for the storing bags right how this is how to manage when you now have order what you want to do is just to mix the dough mixture and then as you are putting of which i have a video of that already but then i'm planning to make more detailed video so expect more detailed video of chicken samosa filling beef samosa filling spring roll filling my vegetable spring roll filling that's the only filling i do for spring roll right then i want to make a feeling of how to wrap and how to store your frozen chops yeah those are the videos you should be expecting that's like five or six already but now we are talking about the business and how it works right so when you have this feeling when a client call you to make orders it's feel more easier because you already have these things in place you already have the feeling all you have to do is to like just make mix your mixture and then start rolling start rolling and before you even start mixing your mixture one thing you should do if you haven't watched my puff puff mix video please go and watch it because when you have that mix already on ground you can also just pack your puff puff mix in such a bag put it in an airtight bowl and keep it so when you have like a urgent order you can just pick up a bag of puff puff already mixed right put it in a bowl and have your warm water ready and just mix that one while you mix that one aside do your samosa and uh, spring roll wrap mix and then you start making by the time you are making whatever quantity you need for that one puff puff is getting ready to be fried you get this is how you balance it but when your puff puff is ready to be fried your spring roll is already getting ready right you 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 just put your air on the stove and you start frying when 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 they have like an urgent order like a pack order from customers i have a lot of packages i have even if it's twelve thousand or fifteen thousand hour box when i have such an order that is not for events like different like 50 to 100 packs right when i have such an order guess what i give my client one hour and that one hour they get their orders because of these things i've put in place you get i don't i i can't even stay without having any of this mixture any of this uh, feeling in my fridge another way to get the order out there easily is to have the ready to fry in your refrigerator okay i have i'm having light challenge in where i live right but you can't come to my fridge and not find two dozen of spring roll and two dozen of samosa in my refrigerator because at least two dozen should be there for when customer comes with their urgent orders urgent order may be a box i have a seven thousand dollar box which consists of maybe uh 20 samosa and 20 spring roll but i have two dozens which is 24 24 right so i still have eight left you get and if for any reason i need more i will just know that i'm going to make less than what i was expecting to make which will save me more time so if you have electricity in your environment you can actually do this like whenever you are less busy whenever you don't have the rush or others coming in just make two to three dozen of each and put in your refrigerator you have your puff puff mix you have your two to three dozen of spring and samosas what do you need again okay from for the chicken i on my own i usually have my chicken already cut and refrigerated my chicken doesn't take long like it this takes like 10 minutes 15 minutes to get cooked so while i'm doing my samosa and spring roll chicken is getting cooked sometimes when i have order tomorrow i cook my chicken the night before and i refrigerate it i take it out from the pot i refrigerate it and in the morning it still feel fresh and i fry and sauce it with my stew or my tomato sauce and it's ready so if you want to go into small chores business you have to take prep you have to take it very seriously 
Small transmissions is not what you want to do as at when the order comes. It's not something you want to do immediately, like all of it immediately. It's something you want to work towards. Like if you are into it, you want to work ahead of it. Because if I am craving for small chops at three o'clock and you deliver small chops at six o'clock or five thirty or four o'clock, see, it's not going to work. I'm not going to enjoy it. You get. If I call you and I ask you by 2 o'clock that I want small chops delivered by 3, is it possible? I want it by 3. I want it delivered by 3. If it's possible, you say yes. And if it's not, you say no. And you on, it, on your own as a vendor, you want it to be possible because you want to make that money. You don't want the client to cancel. These are the tricks to get your client satisfied and to get your goods out there on time. You don't want to keep customers waiting it's small chops another thing you need to do is to get your delivery on ground like what i do when i'm already frying before i start frying my puff puff i know that my rider that's the dispatch rider is already here or on his way like i'm 100 percent sure my dispatch rider is on his way i personally does not eat cold puff puff and i don't expect my clients to enjoy cold puff puff else is like a pack that they ordered for an event and they are the ones that actually kept it to be cold before they serve but if you invite me to your event to come and serve at your event what i do is to make sure you are fully ready to receive or to for your guests to eat it before i start frying because you need to enjoy my snacks when it's hot i don't serve cold snacks you don't want your customer to complain that your snack is cold. You don't want to serve cold snacks to someone that is spending money to patronize you. So another important thing is to make sure the dispatch or whoever that is doing the delivery is already on ground before you start frying your puff puff or whatever you want to fry. When, I, when, I, when I'm making my chops, I just send my dispatch rider a message. I will need you in the, in the next 20 minutes, right? And I wait. When I'm making it, I, even if I'm done, I wait. Then I'll call him. Are you on your way? He says yes. Frying doesn't take long. Depend on the quantity though, of which I can start earlier or start when he's already on his way. You get. I will just wait for them to like, okay, I'm on my way. And I'll start frying. And by the time I'm done, he's already here. Then I will start packaging. You don't want to package your small chops when the rider is not here when the dispatch is not here because the heat from the hot chops can actually cause some little damage you can actually get it to be like soaked mostly the puff puff because my own recipe for my samosa and spring roll it doesn't soak it doesn't like have this moist because i use cornstarch that is my secret i will show you all how i do the mixture like the quantity and all but that is my secret so this video Oh, you already know it's for people that want to go into this business it's for people that want me to share more light to tell them my own way or the way i handle my own so that is basically all i have to say advantage and disadvantage of course all businesses have its own advantage and disadvantage and i believe in my previous words i have somehow mentioned your advantage and disadvantage which is you leaving your leaving your um chops like Covering it when your dispatch is not ready to pick up or having your customer waiting when they actually needed to have their chops at a particular time. Not meeting up. Not meeting up will actually make you lose customers. I have lost customers by not meeting up. Maybe I end up facing one challenge or the other. So a day I was making uh, small chops for a client and my gas just finished. I didn't see that coming. Like it was, it was like magic. I was already frying and all that. It's finished. Good thing my neighbor was available. I, I just, I didn't even know my, my neighbor was over. I just noticed and I ran to her. Please, I need your cylinder. I took it and I quickly finished. But then I have wasted some amount of time before I could uh, think or before I could call the gas uh, company to come and take it. I have wasted like 15 minutes of my time and this actually affected my, my delivery time. So any minute you waste is going to affect your business. So why not prepare? Like plan ahead. Before I, I take daily orders, right? Before I wake up in the morning and start taking orders, I, I already have this plan. Like I know everything is set. All I need is to take this order and execute it. My chicken has to be ready. 
my chops is already like in the fridge or i want to make uh fresh ones i already know i have these feelings available so i don't easily like disappoint these days because i already like learn i, I learn from my mistake i know these things and how to go about it but then i was actually failing to deliver on time and it really affected my business so how um like how to market and get your client i'm going to talk a little about that i for one i got my client from instagram what you want to do is to okay i'm in Oshogbo, nigeria right on my instagram i wrote small chops like my my instagram name not my not my ando this time my ando is matemi's kitchen and event right but then my instagram name like where the name is supposed to be how people can search you and find you you get i wrote small chops in oshobo that was because this is something that people can easily search for they can even if you go to google and type small chops in oshobo if i am not the number one i am the number two i don't know what number i am right now but i know i was number one for a very long time like for a very 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 long time people come to me like people message me to my whatsapp and tell me i got your number from google i didn't put my number on google instagram was where i put my number but google picked it because it was it was detailed it relates to what people have been searching for you get so when you, when they search for small chops in Oshobo, even people from abroad that want to so, uh, surprise their family, they search for small chops in Oshobo or food tray in Oshobo. I use a lot of hashtags so they find me. So if you want to go into this business and you are not you are not thinking of using social media, I don't know how you are going to go about it. This is the kind of business you can do from the comfort of your home, like in your kitchen. I do mine in my kitchen. Though there was a time I opened a shop that was like me wanting to be out there to meet people know people due to my new environment uh, feeling you get but then it's something you can do in your house in your kitchen and you you like be comfortable doing it because it's not going to take a lot of space it's not going to like bother anyone it's, it's a clean business you get and guess what guys is small choice business is very profitable no matter the price hike in uh, materials or anything you know your onions you know how to go about your pricing you know your environment and another thing study your environment very well you know your environment you know how to do it your business then you don't have a problem just go into it and, and explore like go into it and make money that should be the goal you get so guys i don't know if i've actually answered all of your questions but i want to believe more questions are coming and i'm very very open to answer them so please in the comment section of this video it should be like a q uh question um session whatever question like whatever i didn't touch that you're interested in please ask your question in the uh, comment section and if by this time you still haven't subscribed and you're watching my video please do me a favor do me the love and subscribe like subscribe to my channel now i'm bringing you something really good subscribe to my channel so i will be encouraged to bring you more and to each and every one of you who have subscribed so far i really really appreciate i am thankful i am hopeful that you people will keep watching my video and learning more thank you so much for your time thank you for watching so i'm going to add um, a clip of my spring growth feeling to this video just so i don't leave you hanging i'm going to give you just one particle i'm going to add the clip to this video so you can watch and know how to make your spring grow feeling i will be bringing you samosas um like different um type like the chicken one the beef one the beef one is actually my absolute favorite like i love it but beef is quite pricey these days chicken is still on the okay side so i go for chicken for clients but then if you have client that wants beef that doesn't like eating chicken you can learn from it so please click the subscribe button so you can get the notification on your uh, notification bell so you can actually get the notification when that one is up so welcome to the table let me just show you the major major things i'm going to be using like the veggies then when we get to the kitchen where we are making it you can see all the ingredients but now let me just show you the veggies okay so yeah the only thing missing here is actually spring onions but the thing is i couldn't find the spring onions to buy like for like three to four occasions now spring onions has been scarce so what i do i bought this uh, white onion so white onions is something i'm going to be adding 
in the finishing so it's still going to smell good like it's going to add the flavor of spring onions to it but the major one is this um cabbage some shredded carrots a lot of onions like you need a lot of onions onions is expensive i would have even add more but i don't have more than enough so you need a lot of onions right then um i have green peas and some sweet corn here but i need more sweet corn so i have a cup i just opened right here i'm going to like sieve it when i get to the kitchen so yeah these are like the basic thing you need for your spring roll uh filling right yeah these are like the basics apart from the ingredient like the curry the um thyme the salt mangi and every other thing that you'll be adding these are basically what you need yes this is a vegetable spring roll okay there are chicken spring roll there are beef spring roll but this one is vegetable spring roll which is like the common one i use for business you get you have to cut costs in order to give them good prices so they can patronize you or keep patronizing you the taste is actually what matters so these are like everything i use for the spring growth filling you get so these are actually more than enough apart from adding any protein these are actually the basics and what you need first we turn on our heat we turn on the cooker so i'm going to add um just a little vegetable oil to the pots yeah you don't need much though yeah so i'm going to add some sesame oil for flavor yeah just allow that to heat up a little so at this point it's more important to go with fresh ginger and garlic but if you if you don't have those you can also use the grinded one just make sure it's a good product i'm going to lower my heat a little so this one can bring out its flavor so i'm just going to add some to the oil so it can release its flavor so that's the ginger and garlic powder added to the vegetable and sesame oil just stir stir and stir yeah for the flavor to release like the ginger and garlic flavor to release into the oil then the next thing you add your red onions yeah add your red onions stir stir and stir it smells so good like the smell is divine yeah so you don't want this to cook too much just go ahead and add your cabbage i've i've sliced this cabbage since morning i've just find it so difficult to like i've been busy with other things and i didn't make this video on time so So you go ahead and add your washed your clean cabbage i don't know why this cabbage didn't come white but i don't know i don't know like when i was chopping it i noticed the color wasn't white like very white yeah We don't need much oil the reason we don't need much oil is because this, you know cabbage now cabbage is like it releases a lot of water so the less oil you fry with the less liquid you extract later so just add your cabbage stir stir and stir until you see that the oil have actually touched the cabbage very well it's mixed very well Yeah, I think we have gotten that now. So go ahead and add your your carrots. Yeah, your grated carrots. Cabbage and carrots, they produce water. So you don't need too much oil. So you don't end up wasting too much water from it. All your ingredients you just follow. So you want to keep it moderate.
so you just go ahead and stir 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 until everything is well mixed you get this is what you want to be doing until you get the all veggies mixed like the carrot the onions that is already added the cabbage you want everything mixed yeah so this is what you get it's looking so fine already like this is looking good so this is actually like something you cook very fast you don't want it to be too soft so everything just happen fast you get everything just happen fast you don't want the cabbage to die you don't want it to like go too soft in the on the stove you don't want it too moist you still want the crunch a little crunch to be there so at this point what you need to do is just go ahead and start adding your ingredients so everything can cook up together a little sorry guys i don't even know what happened but my phone went off so what i've added so far is seasoning cubes like um uh, mangi powder yeah and curry that, those are just like okay i've added curry mangi and salt that's just what i i had it i didn't know my phone was off sorry about that so this is it so what i'm adding next is white pepper just for flavor like i love the flavor white pepper gives to your dish so i'm just going to add white pepper So you want to go ahead and stir all those ingredients in and the moment you are done stirring does it you want to stir these ingredients in yeah now you want to add your veggies i want more sweet corn in this so i'm going to add more sweet corn like it gives it this fine look and it's enjoyable like when you bite and you see it in your spring roll it's really really enjoyable so i've added more um i'm adding more anyway more sweet corn you get so yeah you just stir you don't want those veggies to actually cook you just want it to mix in this so you just stir stir and that's it like you're done you're fully done this is it this is everything this is everything at this point you are done you are done you are done everything is well mixed you can see you can see so this is your spring roll your vegetable spring roll filling like if you try this people can go ahead and add them um, like um dark soy sauce or light soy sauce but i don't i don't like it i don't i don't work with that so i only use those things when i'm cooking my chinese rice and all that so this is all this is all i use for my spring roll and they come out really tasty it's really nice like okay this is it you can see so guys once you are done you want to take your your made um filling you want to pass it on to a sieve to get those water like those uh, juice from the cabbage out you want to get all the juice out from the so you're just going to leave this for like say 15 20 minutes so that the the filling can come out dry like all the moist all the juice everything can just go out so you're going to leave this preferably just leave it to cool off you get so of course i don't need all of this today like i don't even need i don't think i need even half of it today so what i will do i will show you what i will do after this has cooled down after it has like all the juice have extract from it so yeah i will show you all what i'm going to like how i'm going to preserve it because i don't need it i usually make in fact this is like the smallest batch i've made so far i usually make this in a very large 
quantity i'll just make it and refrigerate them so whenever i have order or whenever i have like bulk order or anything i'm rest assured that i have this Let's leave this one to like cool off to drain all the liquid and then we'll come back to it so as you can see it's fully cold like the temperature has come down and it feels dry now like all the liquid are out i didn't have a lot of liquid because i use less oil so that's what you want you don't want all your ingredients to go with the liquid you get so i'm going to be portioning them in this um ziploc bags yeah i'm going to portion them little by little and then you see what it looks like so you can see i got um three bags from the production i just did so this is going to produce a lot of uh, spring rolls let's say 80 pieces or 70 to 80 pieces though yes that's what i'm going to get from these three mini bags yeah so guys give me a thumbs up give, leave me a comment subscribe to my channel if you have watched till this far thank you so very much i really appreciate you bye so thank you so very much for watching i'm always here to answer all your questions and to give you those apps that you love thank you guys i really appreciate have a nice day bye